Welcome dear students to our history class of standard 10th. Today we will continue with our lesson heritage management. In the previous class we have learned that historical sources include documents, artifacts, archaeological sites, oral transmissions, stone inscriptions, paintings, recorded sounds, images and oral history. Even ancient relics and ruins, broadly speaking, are historical sources. Historical sources inform us about history at the most basic level and these sources are used as clues in order to study history. So, these sources are preserved and conserved in order to link people to its roots. Now, let us continue with our lesson. Early museums began as the private collections of wealthy individuals, families or institutions of rare and curious natural objects and artifacts. These were often displayed in so-called wonder rooms or cabinets of curiosities. Public access to these museums was often possible for the respectable especially to private art collections, but at the whim of the owner and his staff. One of the oldest museums known as Enigaldi Nana's Museum, built by Princess Enigaldi at the end of Neo-Babylonian Empire. The site dates back from 530 BCE and contained artifacts from earlier Mesopotamian civilizations. Notably, a clay drum label written in three languages was found at the site, referencing the history and discovery of a museum item. Modern museums first emerged in Western Europe, then spread into other parts of the world. In France, the first public museum was the Louvre Museum in Paris. It opened in 1793 during the French Revolution, which enabled for the first time free access to the former French royal collections for people of all stations and status. The fabulous art treasures collected by the French monarchy over the centuries were accessible to the public. As Napoleon I conquered the great cities of Europe, confiscating art objects as he went, the collections grew and the organizational task became more and more complicated. After Napoleon was defeated in 1815, Many of the treasures he had amassed were gradually returned to their owners and many were not. His plan was never fully realized but his concept of a museum as an agent of nationalistic fervor had a profound influence throughout Europe. He worked under the patronage of Francis I in the 16th century. This former royal palace is one of the largest museums in the world and its art collection is considered one of the most comprehensive. It contains around 4 lakh works although mercifully perhaps not all are on display at any one time. There are some pieces that never get taken off the walls. Leonardo da Vinci's the Mona Lisa and a smile attract millions of visitors each year. Other must-see masterpieces include Winged Victory of Samothras and Michelangelo's Rebellious Slave. Founded in 1753, the British Museum's remarkable collection spans over 2 million years of human history. 
you can enjoy a unique comparison of the treasures of world cultures under one roof centered around the magnificent great court world famous objects such as the rosetta stone parthenon sculptures and egyptian mummies are visited by up to 6 million visitors per year it was the first public national museum in the world the british museum was established in 1753 largely based on the collections of the Irish physician and scientist Sir Hans Sloane Sloane gathered a large collection of curiosities and not wishing to see his collection broken up after death he bequeathed it to King George II for the nation at that time Sloane's collection consisted of around 71000 objects of all kinds including some 40000 printed books 7000 manuscripts extensive natural history specimens including 337 volumes of dried plants prints and drawings including those by Albrecht Durer and antiquities from Sudan Egypt Greece Rome the ancient near and far east and the america the british museum was the first of a new kind of national museum belonging to neither church nor king freely open to the public and aiming to collect everything you could easily spend the whole day in the british museum and still have thousands of artifacts left to explore founded in 1753 the british museum is one of london's most popular museums stunning architecture or inspiring exhibitions a remarkable collection of over 8 million artifacts that span 2 million years of human history the museum boasts some of the world's famous historical objects it's enough to make your head spin but don't worry set your head at the preferred angle here's a list of the best things to see at the british museum the rosetta stone the rosetta stone is a stone tablet the stone is carved with ancient greek hieroglyphics and demotic egyptian mummy of kate bet the british museum is home to many amazingly preserved mummies but perhaps the most impressive is of kate bet chantress of amun wrapped in linen and bearing a striking golden mask the exhibit dates all the way back to 1300 bc assyrian lion hunt reliefs in assyria lion hunting was a mark of kingly prowess and many assyrian alabaster panels in the museum tell the tale of king assurbanipal's exploits the elgin marbles originally built to honor the goddess athena lord elgin acquired them from greek parthenon in the 19th century still the collection of intricate marbles catalyzed a fascination with classical greece and europe so much so that the british purchased them in 1816 louis chessman this collection of chess pieces unearthed in 1831 are carved from mainly walrus ivory and whale teeth depicting real kings queens and bishops they date way back to around 1280 they were discovered in scotland of the isle of lewis formerly part of kingdom of norway samurai armor harkening back to the edo period this armor forged by unkai mitsuno is unique a number of its pieces come from different times that includes a 16th century bullet proof breastplate and elaborate neck and leg pieces from 18th century 
Easter Island Head A legacy of a lost tradition this massive statue named Hoa Hokananai is a lost or hidden friend of the Moai of Easter Island These huge sculptures are built to honor sacred ancestors brought to Britain by Commodore Richard Ashmore Powell in 1868 the basalt statue also features carvings of birds and rings on its back definitely one of the best things to see at the British Museum colossal granite head of Amenhotep the 3rd this red granite statue was one of many commissions of uh, by king amenhotep the 3rd the head alone weighs an incredible 3600 kilograms ox's treasure these delicate persian relics were crafted in the 4th and 5th century bc yet they are still impressive thousands of years later here you'll see a stunning ox's horse and chariot sculpture sutton ho ship burial helmet this helmet is only one of four intact helmets from anglo-saxon england it was discovered at the sutton ho ship burial one of the most important archaeological sites in britain it is believed to have been part of a rich nobles collection or of a king the smithsonian national museum of natural history opened in 1910 to invoke discovery and education of the natural world its green dome and immense size comparable to 18 football fields as signatures as well as the 140 million plus natural science specimens and cultural artifacts that the museum contains the museum of natural history is centrally located in washington dc on the national mall the museum contains some of the most famous artifacts in the world the janet annenberg hooker hall of geology gems and minerals has a supposedly cursed hope diamond on display and also the star of asia sapphire one of the largest sapphires in the world meanwhile curious the museum's education center offers teens and tweens a lab where they can make their own scientific discoveries after a 5 year renovation the museum reopened its david h coach hall of fossils the 31000 square foot exhibits theme is deep time borrowed from a scientific phrase that illustrates how earth's history has played out over billions of years the hall of dinosaurs has fossilized skeletons and cast models including tyrannosaurus rex cast facing a triceratops cast other permanent exhibits include an insect zoo and the sant ocean hall which features an exact replica of a living north atlantic white whale the hall includes 674 marine specimens and models drawn from over 80 million specimens in the museum's total collection the largest in the world the history of the origin and the growth of the indian museum is one of the remarkable events towards the development of heritage and culture of india founded in 1814 at the cradle of asiatic society of bengal indian museum is the earliest and the largest multipurpose museum not only in the indian subcontinent but also 
in the Asia Pacific region of the world. The ninth oldest museum of the world and the largest in India. The Indian Museum is located in the city of Joy, Kolkata. The foundation stone of the Mu Indian Museum was laid down in the year 1814 and has been a center of multidisciplinary activities ever since. Popularly known as Jadugar, it has the finest collection of contemporary paintings, sacred relics of Buddha, Egyptian mummies and ancient sculptures. In addition to these, the Indian Museum boasts of some of most exquisite collections of ornaments, fossils, skeletons, antiques, armors and stunning Mughal paintings. Presently, the museum has 35 galleries which have been divided into six categories namely art, archaeology, anthropology, geology, zoology and economic botany. For those inquisitive about history, there is also a library and bookshop present within the museum premises. Indian Museum recently celebrated its bicentennial anniversary with great fervor in February 2014. With its splendid collection, the museum takes you back in time to witness our fascinating past. The Government Museum or Madras Museum is a museum of human history and culture located in the Government Museum complex in the neighborhood of Egmore in Chennai, India. Started in 1851, it is the second oldest museum in India after the Indian Museum in Kolkata and is the 10th oldest museum in the world. It is particularly rich in archaeological and numismatic collections. It has the largest collection of Roman antiques outside Europe. Following are some of the well-known institutes and universities which offer degree and diploma courses in museology. National Museum, Delhi, Maharaj Sayaji Rao University, Kolkata University in Kolkata, Banaras Hindu University, Varanasi, Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh and Jivaji University, Gwalior. The following are some of the famous museums in India. Indian Museum, Kolkata. National Museum, Delhi. Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, Vastu Sangralaya, Mumbai. Salar Jung Museum, Hyderabad. The Calico Museum of Textiles, Ahmedabad. Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, Vastu Sangralaya is the main museum in Mumbai, Maharashtra. It was founded in the early years of the 20th century by prominent citizens of Mumbai with the help of the government to commemorate the visit of George V, who was Prince of Wales at that time. It is located in the heart of South Mumbai near the Gateway of India. The museum was renamed in 1998 after Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, the founder of Maratha Empire. The building is built in the Indo-Gothic style of architecture, incorporating elements of other styles of architecture like the Mughal, Maratha and Jain. The museum building is surrounded by a garden of palm trees and formal flower beds. 
the museum houses approximately 50,000 exhibits of ancient history as well as objects from foreign lands categorized primarily into three sections art archaeology and natural history the latest carved ivory jewelry from the Mughal period personal armor of Akbar coins from the times of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj and that from Chandragupta the second from the 4th century AD and snuff bottles from the Chinese art collection are some of the exhibits not to be missed at this museum libraries are important cornerstones of a healthy community libraries give people the opportunity to find jobs explore medical research experience new ideas get lost in wonderful stories while at the same time providing a sense of place for gathering despite what you may hear about the death of print books and the lack of interest in libraries there are actually more libraries in the US than there are Starbucks more than just storage spaces for books libraries are important community hub libraries which house centuries of learning information history and truth are important defenders in the fight against misinformation more so than a community center town hall or public park ever could libraries connect their communities in a way that benefits everyone a library fit for a king Ashur Banipal's library is one of the most important archaeological discoveries ever made but what actually was it the library of Ashur Banipal is the name given to a collection of over 30,000 clay tablets and fragments inscribed with cuneiform a type of writing used in Mesopotamia that is ancient Iraq texts were written by pressing a reed pen into soft clay the tablets were discovered in the ruins of the city of Nineveh now northern Iraq once capital of the mighty Assyrian Empire ruled by Ashurbanipal from 669 to 631 BC they were excavated in a series of digs from the 1840s to through to the 1930s and form the remains of the Assyrian royal collections of scholarly literature and archives Nineveh was consumed by fire in around 612 BC but while paper books were destroyed by fire the clay tablets were in most cases baked harder making them among the best preserved documents from thousands of years of Mesopotamian history Ashur Banipal was an extraordinary king in his inscriptions he boasts about the breadth and depth of his learning while other Assyrian kings led the army on far-flung campaigns Ashur Banipal stayed at home his father wanted the young prince to be educated because this would give him direct access to the expertise he relied on to run the empire Assyrian scholarship was focused on understanding the will of gods so his library focused on texts that interpreted omens from the gods however Ashur Banipal had an interest in literary books as well Ashur Banipal still kept tablets he had written during his training presumably for sentimental reasons many of his tablets in his collection bear a library stamp of sorts stating that they belong to his palace before the discovery of the library almost everything we knew about ancient Assyria came from the stories in the Bible or classical historians with the discovery of the library thousands of cuneiform texts were recovered telling the Assyrian stories in their own words from these we can follow quote hymns and prayers and thumb through medical handbooks 
as well as reading in incredible detail about the deeds of the king. The library was also famous in antiquity centuries after Ashurbanipal's death and a serious destruction. While many tablets have been found at other sites, over the last 170 years, Ashurbanipal's tablets still remain our primary source for most of what we know about Mesopotamian scholarship of the time. Takshashila, meaning the city of cut stone or Taksha rock, is an important archaeological site in Takshila city, Rawalpindi district of the Punjab in Pakistan. It is considered to be the first university in the world. It was a great center of learning with a number of famous teachers, each having school of its, of its own. The university had an excellent library. The library collection included works on Hinduism, political science, literature, medicine and philosophy. The city of Gandhara, including the university and the library, was destroyed during the invasion of Hunas in the middle of the 5th century. Takshila, also known as Takshashila, flourished from 600 BC to 500 AD in the kingdom of Gandhar. 68 subjects were taught at this university and the minimum entry age as per the ancient text was 16. At one stage, it had 10,500 students, including those from Babylon, Greece, Syria and China. Experienced masters taught the Vedas, languages, grammar, philosophy, medicine, surgery, archery, politics, warfare, astronomy, accounts, commerce, documentation, music, dance and other performing arts, futurology, the occult and mystical sciences, complex mathematical calculations. The panel of masters at the university included legendary scholars like Kautilya, Panini, Jivak and Vishnu Sharma. Thus, the concept of a full-fledged university was developed in India. The Great Library of Alexandria in Alexandria, Egypt was one of the largest and most significant libraries of the ancient world. The library was a part of the larger research institution called the Mausian, which was dedicated to the Muses, the nine goddesses of the arts. The library quickly acquired many papyrus scrolls, largely due to the Ptolemaic king's aggressive and well-funded policies for procuring text. It is unknown precisely how many such scrolls were housed at any given time, but estimates range from 40,000 to 4 lakhs at its height. Alexandria came to be regarded as the capital of knowledge and learning, in part because of the great library. Despite the widespread modern belief that the library of Alexandria was burnt once and cataclysmically destroyed, the library actually declined gradually over the course of several centuries. Destruction of the library of Alexandria meant a huge loss of knowledge and significantly slowed down progress of humanity. For example, librarians knew the sun and not the earth was the center of our solar system. They knew earth was round. To this very day, destruction of the library of Alexandria symbolizes loss of knowledge due to political or religious reasons. Tanjavur Maharaja Sarfoji's Saraswati Mahal is located in Tanjavur, Tamil Nadu. 
it is one of the oldest libraries in Asia. The Saraswati Library is situated within the campus of Tanjavur Palace. The Saraswati Mahal started as a royal library for the Nayak kings of Tanjavur who ruled 1535 to 1675 AD. The Maratha ruler Vyankoji Bhosle captured Tanjavur in 1675, patronized local culture and developed the Royal Palace Library until 1855. Most notable among the Maratha kings was Sarfoji II, who was an eminent scholar in many branches of learning and the arts. In his early age, Sarfoji studied under the influence of German reverend Squats and learned many languages including English, French, Italian and Latin. He enthusiastically took special interest in the enrichment of the library, employing many pundits to collect and buy and copy a vast number of works from all renowned centers of Sanskrit learning in northern India and other far-flung areas. Since 1918, the Saraswati Mahal Library has been a possession of the state of Tamil Nadu. The official name of the library is in the honor of the great royal Maratha patron. The library has on display a rare collection of palm leaf manuscripts and paper written in Tamil, Hindi, Telugu, Marathi, English and few other languages indigenous to India. The collection comprises well over 60,000 volumes. Some noteworthy libraries in India are the National Library Kolkata, Nehru Memorial Museum and Library Delhi, State Central Library Hyderabad, Library of Asiatic Society and David Sassoon Library, Mumbai. Archives are collections of information known as records. These come in many forms such as letters, reports, minutes, registers, map, photographs, films, digital files and sound recordings. Archives provide first-hand information or evidence relating to historical events or figures. In general, archives consist of records that have been selected for permanent or long-term preservation on grounds of their enduring cultural heritage or evid evidentiary value. The Imperial Record Department was set up on 11th March 1891 in Kolkata. In 1911, it was transferred to the new capital, New Delhi, and in 1926, it was shifted to its new building. K. R. Narayanan, then President of India, declared the Museum of National Archives open to the general public on 6th July 1998. This museum provides overview of the multifarious holdings of the National Archives and promotes a common man's interest in archival holdings. The languages of the records include English, Arabic, Hindi, Persian, Sanskrit and Urdu. Also, their materials include paper, palm leaf, birch bark and parchment. The records are in four categories, public records, oriental records, manuscripts and private papers. Governments of every state in India maintain independent archives. There are about 5 crore Modi documents related to Maratha history in the Pune branch. These documents 
are referred to as Peshwa Daftar. So today we have covered the topics on museums, library and archives. Now students go through this section of the lesson in the textbook and read it well. We will continue with the lesson in the next part. Thank you.